Adapting the source material is such a difficult process. It's so tough to do right, and it's so tough to do even in a way that does justice or brings justice to the medium that you are so appreciating in your adaptation of said medium. Recently, we have been incredibly lucky that we've gotten the One Piece live-action adaptation being absolutely stellar. Not being the best adaptation of a comic or manga that I've ever seen, because that's the boys. Hey, Kraut. Oh, oh my god. What the fuck? It's not what it looks like. I'm not just like the rest of you. I'm stronger. I'm smarter. I'm better. I am better! It's impossible to make everyone happy. I've learned that. I could say nice things about some things and people will hate me, and I could say not nice things about other things and people will hate me. People hate me a lot. I get a lot of hate. People don't like, I don't know why this is the case. People don't like me, I've noticed sometimes on Twitter especially. Some people would argue that making a good adaptation is all about taking the spirit, the lifeblood, the soul of the original and putting it into whatever medium you're adapting it into. Now, I think that's what brought One Piece live action to its level of success because it really brought the spirit of One Piece into this live action, even though obviously it is not a one-to-one -one adaptation. But that's fine. Because it's not an anime setting, you are going to have to change things. Some things will be enhanced, some things will be detracted from. But overall, that is not necessarily the point I want to make in this video. This is not a review of One Piece. Now, bringing the soul of whatever you're adapting into your adaptation, that's great. That's well and good. But you know how you surpass it? You know how you blow it out of the water? It's when you take the little components of the thing you're adapting and you turn it into something glorious. Glorious. Something that may be different, but something glorious. This is where the boys comes in. The superhero phenomena that, in my opinion, holds the balls in a vice grip of any meta-commentary pseudo-realistic superhero setting. The boys manga kind of had the same idea. You had the boys, it was a bunch of dudes out there going to fuck some mothers, as they say, and beat up some soups. But delving so much deeper in the live action to the darkest crevices of a incredibly hardcore mega-capitalist society, Society, with the superhero sitting at the uppermost echelon being the richest, the wealthiest, the most famous goddamn real life superheroes, they really delve into the absolute vile, corrupt, and decrepit asshole of society and what society would really look like if it was shaped by this mega corporation of superheroes. And it really takes it to the next level. It's not just about superheroes not being such nice guys, it opens up your eyes into every nook and cranny and facet of what why society is corrupt today and just incorporates it into a situation where you also have these epic super battles of all awesome dudes out there flying around and shitting all over cities. Just like today, you have the absolute peak mega ultra rich prick looking down and spitting on the peons that walk beneath him. You have the same thing here, except it's Homelander. It's a guy that can fly. Obviously, this narcissistic asshole who everyone loves is gonna think he's literally God too. The Boys actually does what no superhero movie actually has the balls to do. It'll take a step back and it'll look at the society that it's crafted with super superheroes at its core and be like, wait a second, these guys would actually kind of be corrupt assholes, wouldn't they? I mean, yeah, sure, it would be nice if they could be the Avengers, but why would they be the Avengers? They have all the power. Most people with all the power are kind of assholes. I find it hilarious as a YouTuber, a person with like a tiny, itty bitty, tiny, whiny, pathetic modicum of power and prestige, seeing other YouTubers fall off the absolute deep end straight into the asshole of depravity is hilarious and also way too common. I love how I used to collab with certain YouTubers when they were small, little, and always cute, but then they blew up and it's like, who are you? You don't get the same view count I do. And this is stupid, pathetic YouTuber shit. This is an actual life-changing people like Homelander who literally cannot face any form of consequence. Yes, the boys definitely adapts the comic in a way that, yeah, we have these corrupt superheroes that are kind of causing uh, collateral damage when they run around and do shit, and, and the boys are out there trying, trying to take these down, but it really takes a much much deeper look into how disgusting and corrupt a society could truly be. I just love how the show starts off with you have this dude, Huey, just your average little dumb shit fuck guy that, that you could all relate to because, because you're probably a dumb shit fuck guy. Huey has a girlfriend, all's going swell for him, and then, much like most of your lives probably, it stops going swell for him. When you ever besmirch Billy Joe. I can't stop, I can't stop, I can't stop, I can't stop, I can't stop. 
We knew that the boys was gonna be dark and gritty, but we didn't think that we'd start off by Huey's freaking girlfriend getting railed right in front of Huey, almost like Sneeko's girlfriend got railed in front of him. And this is when you realize, wow, that, that was kind of messed up. I guess people having superpowers kind of kind of would screw up society in some ways. There are actually gonna be, you know, relatively awkward amounts of uh, collateral damage when these borderline demigod creatures are flying around wrecking shit up. And that is about where the actual adaptation of the comic ends and the story begins and that's what they're trying to tell you here society with superpowers would absolutely wreck society but you're probably wondering to yourself at this point wait, wait a second people should know about this joey's gonna sue the flibberschnitz out of a train what's going on and that is when the flibberschnitz turn on huey Huey is basically tried to be paid off and be silenced. Much like when some massive super corporation does something horribly unethical and violates all sorts of codes and guidelines and all that fun shit, they manage to silence criticism by waving a massive wad of cash and dick slapping each other with it. You could imagine the even more super corrupt corporation of superheroes is gonna do goddamn the same thing and their threats are so much scarier than any threat any actual legal juggernaut can give you in the real world. So instead of just delving into the collateral damage that these superheroes seem to be doing, which is absolutely fucked up, you will have to notice that they're accidents, ultimately. It's the purposeful covering up and abuse of the legal system that's even scarier. This is how you adapt a comic book story, a story about corrupt superheroes, by not just making them corrupt in their actions or their lack of fear of consequence or their narcissistic tendencies in believing that they are superior in one way or another. The way you adapt a comic like this is you take the overall theme of corrupt superheroes and you incorporate it on a macro level about how society itself would be corrupt with superheroes spearheading that corruption. It's for this reason and this reason alone that Homelander is one of the most relatable characters. I mean, uh, scary characters, uh, terrifying guys. <laughs> I didn't say relatable. Every single season continues to evolve Homelander's character. He is someone that wants to be loved by everyone, and he will carry out that lie that he actually cares about everyone. He will preach all sorts of crazy values because he knows that's exactly what the people, the maggots below him, want to hear. He could be revered as a hero and a god as long as he goes out there and starts spamming all that borderline basic cringe shit that he doesn't believe in even a little bit. Man will say what he knows his supporters want to hear. Man cares about the ratings and reviews he gets. Man is not only the most powerful man alive, but also the the most famous, most revered, and most loved. He loves himself almost as much as the people love him, and he will continue to do anything in his power to remain in that frame of reference by the people. But at some point, when some of the really heinous shit he does actually gets uncovered or revealed or exposed, like say, for example, there was a plane that got in trouble and he ended up on the plane, and in order to stop the terrorist guy attacking the plane, he accidentally blew the engine up and the plane was about to crash and everyone was about to die, and he couldn't save everyone on the plane, he can't carry all those people. He wouldn't even carry one of those people. He would rather let them all crash and die and then, well, he could say he was never there instead of saving one person who could be a living, breathing proof that he was the cause of the death of all the rest of them. That's showing a true evil, a true corruption at his very core. But the most terrifying part of all of it is, if everyone does figure out that, let's say, hypothetically, he does do all this stuff. Maybe he's not the nice Jesus too that everyone thought that he was. What's stopping him from just embracing that? What's stopping him from just saying, well, I don't care if they love me or they fear me. I could do anything I want with no consequences anyway. What's the difference? And no one could stop him. Homelander can effortlessly and ultimately pivot anywhere he wants because nothing can stop him. There are no consequences to his actions and he has no reason to hold himself back from doing whatever he wants, killing whoever he wants or lying in any way. Way he sees fit. That is true terror, but that is also corruption to its absolute highest degree. You adapt a story about superheroes kind of actually being assholes and you turn it into the highest level of corruption seen in the actual modern day. Homelander will not face consequence to his crimes because he's just too powerful in the same way that incredibly influential political figures that'll cover atrocities and do actual horrible criminal shit will never actually see the inside of a prison cell. In my humble opinion, The Boys is everything that a gritty dark superhero story actually needs to be. It's taking a really dark look at what a corrupt society would be and taking a 
really dark look and how corrupt the people trying to take down that society need to be. The depths of depravity needed to be taken and the insanely drastic measures that need to be undertaken by the people trying to actually cause some sort of positive change. The biases on the side of what you thought were the good guys and what you thought were the bad guys, constantly flipping, tossing, and turning because ultimately the reason why this story works so well is because all the characters are very, very human. Despite some of them having these near godlike abilities, they are more human characters than anything you see in actual modern day garbage superhero stuff. I don't want to see a superhero that is a moral Jesus, that is perfect in every way, that only wants the goodness for people around him, that will stop at nothing to thwart evil in its tracks and stop it from taking and rearing its ugly head into society. Goodness can always prevail in the most selfless possible way, where I'll take credit if I have to, but not that I really want to. I just want the people to be safe. The boys actually takes a real human look at people, and uh, frankly, that's because most people are assholes in one way or another. Most people that do have ultimate power will not take responsibility for their actions, and therefore will regard themselves as better, and therefore will not selflessly go out there doing everything they can for the many. With great power comes great responsibility is a fairy tale for the actual people in power, just like fighting for justice is a fairy tale for the oppressed as well. This is not a deep dive into the boys, per se, because, quite frankly, I would not be able to do it justice in the time slot that I've given myself. But from Homelander to the Deep to Billy motherfucking Butcher, this show is a masterclass in character writing, writing absolutely broken characters. Whether it's from their own narcissism, whether it's from their past that shaped them into who they are, or whether it's from a completely debilitating, terrible self-esteem. The boys comic was supposed to be a gritty look at a very dark superhero story. And that's what the live action adaptation delivered tenfold. There will never, ever be a more human character than Homelander.